Hello, Dominic here, gonna make some painting. Do some painting, make a painting. This time I'm going to use these colors, which I forgot to see if they're in the shot. I got a lighter pinkish purple, I got a light violet, I got a little bit darker of a pinkish purple, bluish purple, mostly bluish, a little bit of lightened aquamarine. I made with turquoise and a light blue. It's a bolder version of sky blue or baby blue. Should probably go with the baby blue because skies aren't aren't aren't, uh, aren't just one blue anymore. So I'll start by putting white all over it. And today we're doing something new. We're going to try out the sink strainer. So I'm going to pour the paint on top of the sink strainer, the colored paints. Uh, with wet white paint all over the canvas. This time I haven't pre-made the uh, mixed paints in a cup, so I'll do that real quick. These paints I mixed three days ago and I've been keeping them alive by adding more Floetrol and water to them. So things might turn out just a little different than usual. As you can see, I'm pouring the paint directly over the canvas without worrying about it at all. That's because the wet paint works with all the other wet paint once it's on there anyways. So it's not, uh, there's no risk. Uh, when pouring the paint into your dirty cup, you can pour it from a little higher up, like I'm doing now, and that causes it to go right into it. And if you pour it slowly, just above, you know, as low as you can, Usually it settles on top. I think you can probably see that. This is doing both. It's going deep and settling on top. And I think that's because I kept diluting these paints. Um, how thick the paint is, is not actually very important. As long as it's not too runny and not too thick so it won't slide around. <coughs> There are ways to, to know what is a, a good level, and I'll show you that, you know, the thickness. I've already shown you uh, in the previous video that for, to have your paint the right kind of runny, a good thing to look for is the string when it comes off. There's a stringy end. A little bit drippy, and that's pretty good. I like the white a bit heavy because, uh, well, it's a heavier paint to begin with. That's titanium white. It actually has titanium in it, which makes it heavy. That's why I put titanium in the cup at the bottom or the top or both. It is because it causes it to sink through, and when it does, it brings the other colors with it. And although I've been letting these paints sit around for a few days. Um, I, I think because of that, the, the, uh, what's that stuff called? The silicone that I put into these paints originally may have mostly evaporated. But this sink strainer thing we're doing doesn't require a lot of cells. It should create a cool pattern all on its own. So, well, we're going to find out. We're going to see. Now this is a pretty big canvas, it's 16 inches by 20 inches, uh, half an inch deep, I think, yeah, half an inch deep. So, uh, I've been working on smaller ones lately, so I'm actually a little out of my head for thinking about how much is needed. Oh, that's got some chunks. Maybe I should have given that a good old stir. Uh, normally I choose the colors to put into these cups in order. I like to make them complement each other or put them near to the other shades of the same color because then they arrive together in the painting and when they're similar, like these purples, it often creates depth, like an effect of depth. And I really like that. Right now I'm just trying to use some of this paint I mixed up because I made a lot of it. 
really a lot of it. And uh, although I don't really worry about waste, I still try not to create waste. Here we go. That's the last of that one. I will still be continuing my big project of smaller projects. Uh, but I don't want to do it with all the same paint cups because they're starting to get a little bit clumpy. I'm not really sure what kind of uh, consequences that brings. <clears throat> it may be that I have to very delicately pull some clumps out of the painting after it's done. Or we might be lucky, maybe this thing will trap them. The sink strainer. So we're doing three purples and three blues, basically, for this one. We got two cups emptied. Here's the third one. And then more of this. this uh, these colors were half selected by Helen Wary and half selected by myself so this is another one of those collaborations with a member of the affected community and that's what I like to do I like to get people doing this with me so that's all of them I emptied all of those cups I'm happy about that We've successfully avoided some waste, as long as the painting itself isn't waste. But I haven't yet created a waste painting. I like all of them. There are a few that I'd like to touch up, keep learning, you know, ways of troubleshooting fixes, but nothing is ruined. Uh, oh, that's not true. I did a string pull flower thing. I ended up fully repainting it. If you're going to be doing this, you're going to want lots of popsicle sticks. You're going to want flood flow troll. You're going to want to go to the art store, I mean the kitchen store. I can't for the life of me figure out why they sell art supplies at the kitchen store. Colanders and things, pouring your paint through, it's always a good idea. Um, and lots of black and white. Now this white was a little chunky a second ago, so I'm just going to give it a real good stir. There may still be some chunks in there. Eyeballing it is a little bit tricky because bubbles look like chunks. So when you find a chunk, you kind of want to mash it against the side of the cup so that you can find out if it's a bubble, it'll just go away. If it's a chunk, you can then slide it up and get rid of it. I don't think I have enough white here to cover the whole canvas, but I've got some extra on hand. And if I need to mix up a little more, I'll pause the video and get that done real quick. So, uh, covering the whole canvas with white first is to allow the other paint from those cups I just made to slide on top of it. And that way the pattern that forms as the paint flows through the holes in the sink thing, sink strainer, uh, will stay. It'll sit on top of the white instead of gripping the paint or gripping the canvas and rolling over itself. I've talked about that before and I said I would show you so maybe I'll um, leave a little bit uncovered and we'll see if it shows up in this video. It's a thing uh, that I can do with just about any painting. Uh, oh, we have options, right? Um, well, I don't 
don't have a spreader of any type here. Oh, I would use a spoon. Spoon will do. Another thing from the art store. I mean, the kitchen store. I want to just get it all wet. As much as I can. Especially the edges. And more importantly than that, the corners. Because sliding it around on the canvas, it doesn't want to go for the corners, right? Because it's a fluid, so it'll it will assume a circular shape as best it can. So I'm just going to get a little bit of the white wrapped onto these edges, make it wet, gotta get it wet. Wet is good. It's fluid, right? I set up some copyright music copyright free music and then forgot to turn it on. So you're just listening to me this time apparently. I suppose I can still do that. Hands are clean enough. Maybe I won't. I might screw up the volume levels of speech and everything. I can never quite tell how loud my voice is compared to the music on the video, even though I should just be able to hear it. A funny thing. This is a pretty good start. Need more white. Got my little backup bottle. It's good to keep some white or black in a capped bottle because doing this kind of art, you use quite a lot of the white and black. And you can shake it. faster than stirring it. Got an eyelash on there. What do you think? Should I pull it off or let it be in the painting? Got enough white on here that we can slide it around. It was pretty funny. Um, I heard back from Mrs. M.A. after I did the video of her paintings where I did this with black. She told me about her reaction when she saw that. No, that's way too much black! But she didn't realize that, uh, oh, I got the eyelash, it's staying in. And she didn't realize that the paint slides over top and that the black doesn't come through. I thought that was pretty funny. Those paintings worked out really nicely and taught me a lot of things too. I'm glad I did that project. I mean, you know, and she's happy too, especially. You know, that's the best reason to be happy about having done that project. But it was beneficial for me too in a lot of ways. So, let's get paint all over everything. Everything covered. And since I've just covered the whole canvas, I guess I won't be showing you the roll under effect that happens when you don't have the wet paint over the top. Uh, not in this one. We'll do it on the next one. Maybe on those beach ports. I'm still, uh... It's funny, those were gonna, that was going to be the first part of this project of projects, and I still haven't done it. Changed my mind. Did the birds. Um, the birds was fun. That was a good video to make. Lots of talking, which I've been wanting to do more of. I'm trying to say, screw the self-conscious feelings, right? There are all these things that stop us. Those days are done. I'm trying to communicate that to the universe now. Gotta overcome all that nonsense. And this side is not wetted. Get wetted. Get wetted. Yeah. Nice white. This is now a painting of some Canadian scenery. Brought to you by your frosty Canadian friend. Haha! <laughs> oh, missed a spot. There we go. Okay. Now we'll put this approximately in the middle. Uh, popsicle stick. So that I can mix up the layers in this delicious looking cocktail just a bit. We got another nice looking stick. Can't really tell what's in the shot or not. 
I like to use the forward pointing camera on the tablet because it's got slightly better quality. It's a very old tablet. Uh, oh, I put that down. I'm going to give a stir on this one too. I have a little collection of these pretty popsicle sticks. I wonder if one day I'll make something out of them. I probably will. I like messing around with just about anything. Well, I'm getting cells on the popsicle stick, so... Depending on how the paint flows through all the little holes on the sink catcher thing, sink strainer, I think we're going to see cells in this. Okay. I'm just going to pour it right on top. If you do this without something in the middle and just hold it really still and pour slowly, it's called a tree ring pour, and it looks beautiful. So that's basically what I'm doing. But the sink strainer should create a fancy pattern. We're getting a lot of blending between the colors. I think that's because I've been thinning them more and more to preserve the paint over these last three days. We will be seeing more than one effect produced by this sink strainer over time. I'm going to allow this to sit for just a short amount of time while I get uh, some paper towels handy because I'm about to have paint all over my hands and I didn't really set that up. Kind of hurried right into this. Just uh, slapped all the supplies together, had a shower, came out, hit record, and there we're going. That's one cup, and I'd like you to have a closer look at that, so watch out for motion sickness. Here's what we got so far. In the videos I've watched with other people using colanders and things, those uh, loopy bits there that you see, they happen all the way around. In this case, we got them in some spots, but not others. It looks like we have a kind of galaxy happening. Or an underwater scene, maybe. Yeah, I do believe there's enough paint on there that I can just tilt the canvas around and get it fully covered. This isn't the finished idea right here. The white will be completely gone, or almost completely gone. I'll preserve the white, uh, only if it looks really cool. fall over. No, that's good. <clears throat> it is slowly spreading out, and that's probably uh, a technique that is an option to let it do it at a different pace, but you'd still have to interact with it after that a little bit more, because it won't slowly spread to cover this whole canvas. See how thick it is. It doesn't look thick. I'm going to continue pouring with the other cup. I want to be sure there's enough. There's extra. Lately I've been using way too much paint and I end up with these puddles. And uh, they're not waste. I let them dry and they become skins. I've probably mentioned that in the other videos too. So here we go. More of the same colors from another cup. pooling a little bit in the sink strainer and slowly making its way through, which I think looks pretty cool.
got something else ready to put paint on. Yeah, I got a little little canvas over there. Good. I'll pour the rest of that cup on the little canvas. All right, let's do some tilting. It's not going to keep the circular shape, but if I tilt it just a little in each direction and wash the overall shape, I can have a little bit of control. Right now, though, I'm really just accelerating entropy so the universe can do its part. With just a little bit of guidance from me. But I don't have a lot of control over this part. When I go to a corner, we're going to lose quite a lot. Oh, it's so wet I can't hold the whole canvas in one hand. It's slippery. what's happening over here. Let's get that first corner finished. Alright, there we go. Move towards the opposing corner. Just a bit. I'm going to lose that pretty light blue part that I like. It's going to go over the edge. Got to tilt it away from your viewpoint for a sec here, just to get this closest corner. The <laughs> cold paint on my fingers tickles. Here we go. Almost got this one covered. There we go. Last corner. blue streak on there. Oop, there it's covered. Let's move the blue streak into a more balanced position. So this is basically a finished painting, what we're looking at right now. I just need to uh, eyeball it and slide the parts that I like the most into balance. So I'm actually going to get rid of the middle there it goes. And there's some white spots in this corner. That... Ah, that's good actually. They can stay. We got them on the opposite corner. That's um, that's happening because of the silicone, which I thought we might have mostly moved away. I'll put this back on my little applesauce cups which are upside down so that I'm not putting the canvas directly on the flat surface underneath. Yeah, because this has the wraparound effect and it would screw up the uh, overall situation. That one needs a bit of purple. Okay. Oh, that one needs purple and blue. the paint on my hands to touch up the corners. Quite often, even when you do get the... I think I made the whoop sound effect for all four corners on this one. When you get your whoop of paint going over the corner, it doesn't always stay in place. And there's a little crease because the canvas is folded there. So you want to have a look and make sure that... Uh, make sure that you got some paint on there. Otherwise, you're going to have to come back when it's dry and touch it up with a brush. And I don't like doing that. I like to prime the canvas with a brush and then forfeit the paintbrush altogether. Now, as you can probably see, i got paint all over my hands. got some clean fingertips, though, so I'm going to pause the video, wash my hands, and then give you a better view. 
Hang on. Okay. Got my hands clean so I can carry you around. I'll go nice and slow so that you don't end up uh, throwing up all over the place or something. Here we are. Backing up, backing up, backing up, tripping over things. Uh oh. <laughs> Alright, here we are. That's 16 inches by 20 inches. It's got the wrap around. Now that I've backed up so you can see the whole thing, let's look for patterns. So we've got cells coming up in white, which is nice. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. There's some on the corner in the top surface here, and quite a lot on the top surface over here. It looks like we got a really cool skin right there too. And there too, that looks like a really cool skin also. We've got plenty of cells. We've got so many cells. That's funny, I thought there wouldn't be cells, but that there would be the pattern. The obvious pattern, like really, really obvious. No sign of it. A few trailing lines that almost parallel each other. That's probably what used to be the pattern. But here we go. I hope you love it. Especially you, Helen, because these are your colors. And my color choices were the ones you were thinking about choosing, so... I think we synchronized on this one. We wanted the same, same kind of thing happening. And we ended up with a really nice blend. I'm trying to show you the edges now, just in case this one has picked up any really cool wraparound effect. Looks like a fairly standard one. Very balanced image here. So here we go. I'll, uh, I'll be working your name into it again, Helen, because that was fun last time when I made Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And, uh, what was the other one? The Wary Nebula. I don't have a lot of room to squeeze in to look at this other side. That one's really cool. Alright. I just lost use of that piece of my desk space for the next day and a half. <laughs> oh, before I hang this one up, I know it's been long. We're coming up on half an hour. I'm trying to move slowly off camera after I did the birds, which we can look at here. They're dry now. We can see the paint did sink in through all the little spots to help them have definition, but the edges didn't take. So in a future video, I'm actually going to clean that up. We'll troubleshoot it and see what we can do to make that look better. And I still have the other set of birds. Um, here's a canvas board that I did in the beach style, just trying to use the paint. I think it turned out pretty cool. Here's another canvas board that I did using uh, the, same, the same style, but I slid it around a lot more. And I discovered that I'd forgotten to prime this one after spraying it, and it's getting that same edge effect where the paint doesn't stick right on the edge. See the white line? That's what's happening on the birds. In this case, it's because I, uh, I didn't put gesso after I sprayed it. I thought I had. So the paint didn't want to stick on the edges. And I also did these three canvases, these long ones, four inches wide by twelve inches long. Once they're fully dried, I'll put them side by side so you can see how their, uh, their colors and patterns do match up a little bit. I slid it around a bit too much for it to for it to have a pattern that reaches across all three canvases. <clears throat> the next one though, I mean I'm definitely doing that again with those 4x12s on the 2 inch deep. So the next one I will video it. I'll show you all kinds of cool stuff, I hope. And uh, I think I've run out of things to talk about in this particular video. Here's the cups that are left. So I'm still doing the paint saving effort. I will uh, snap a photograph and stitch that to the end of this video so that you can see it a little bit nicer. In a few days, I'll put it in the sun, get you a real nice photo of it. 
Thank you very much for tuning in.